Hello there internet dwellers, welcome back to another video. Today we are reacting to three analogue horrors sent in by you guys on Discord by some very very talented creators. There are two that we know and then there's one here that I've never watched before but I'm very excited to watch. The creators will be linked down below so be sure to go support them by subscribing, liking, going watching their videos for yourselves. If you're not a member of my Discord already, consider joining it down below. Pop something in the Scare Bad submission channel and if I react to it, I'll give you a shout out. Also, people who join as a member can get very early access to my videos and exclusive channels on Discord that keeps you up to date with what I'm doing. So consider joining as a member. The first video was recommended to me by Retired Meme Lord Scott. Twisting Smiling Critters, Prior Aldridge Paradox by Secret for Studio. You're hiding more red from me. I know you are. Embark on a journey into the twisted world. Let's go, baby. Here we go. This is an original series created by Secret for Studio. So let's jump in, you know. <laughs> Fantastic stat. That is what we want to see. Engaged immediately. A man, or whatever the hell that First, was. We were successfully eliminating those abominations on site. Yeah. Bro, I mean, hang on. I don't mean to be the person to pause, right? Because uh, I know this is meant to be a reaction. I meant to just react as I go along. First, but look at the we way this thing those is still running at you and you refuse to back off. You're shooting it with three assault rifles here, I assume. Sight. And it's still running at you. Run, mate. Okay, well there we go. Easy prey, we used to joke. Easy but prey. We opened the sealed vault and ventured deeper into the it's the sealed vault co facility. Like it's fallout. Did no one think to question and it became a living why this the this creator of the Poppy Playtime universe, not the actual creator, you know what I'm talking about, the person in universe needed a vault Nightmare. to create these things. More creatures came at us than we had ammo to take them down. Dude sounds like uh, Chris Redfield. Nice. This is very well done. Super well done. Oh my god, bro. No, 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 no. Just, I don't care how many years of training I've had at this point, how much military training, SWAT team, I'm turning and I'm running, okay? You can shoot me for desertion. I am not being ripped up by whatever the hell this gangly creature is. Soon the roles reversed. Look at it! It's like Slenderman's weird cousin. An easy prey for them. Ooh! I love the love the atmosphere of this. It's really good. I do love when my guests come to visit. Okay, so these are the smiling critters, the ones from the last chapter Since with catnap. It's been so lonely in here. The hour of joy is such a messed up term for what actually happened. Are you hiding from me? How yeah, I'm hiding from you. Finish my painting, you see. I get I Don't bet that you want to help me finish it. I need just no, a bit not. more red. A bit more red. Yeah, what what are you drawing? What are you oh, painting? You make this so much fun. Woo! Do get impatient. Four to five hours of sleep before work. Why isn't it like seven, eight hours? Like eight hours is the the is supposedly the prime, the the actual efficient number. Even I get tired after waking, like sleeping for eight hours. Man, this is. <laughs> DBD locker. No way. Bro, imagine a freaking Poppy Playtime DBD crossover. That'd be crazy. Like just this map alone in the school. Then again, there's already a school, isn't there? There's the Freddy Krueger. This guy turned into Dwight. Bro, she's good. She's gonna impale straight through it, right? My God! Don't struggle. It's for the art, after all. Right. 
holy crap this is like i i need to subscribe to this career that was that was phenomenal that was amazing so that was i'm guessing they're doing this is a series based that, that there's going to be more of this the prior Eldridge paradox that there's a lot more videos here yeah as you can see guys there's a lot going on here look at this siren head versus cartoon cat the hour of joy maybe we'll have to re definitely revisit this channel at some point that was really, really good. Keep up the amazing work there, Secret for Studio. You've definitely earned a fan and a subscriber. So guys, be sure to go check out Secret for Studio in the description now. Go watch the video for yourself. Um, just go support this career. That was really, really good. We're going to move on to the next video now, guys. And it was recommended by Sonic the Hedgehog on my Discord. Paranormal Activity, FNAF VHS by Velox. Recorded 08-23-2004. I can't believe what I saw inside Freddy Fazbear's pizza. Those poor kids, they're still there, trapped, aware and suffering. It was more than just a haunting. It felt like a cry for help, an echo of their pain that's been ignored for far too long. Seeing them, feeling their presence, it's, it's disturbed me to my core. I've never been so terrified and yet, I know I can't walk away. I have to help them. I have to find a way to give them peace, to bring justice for what happened, no matter how dark or dangerous this gets. I owe it to them. They deserve to be heard and free from this nightmare. Michael Afton. Okay, rolling. Yeah, we are. There, no, no subtitles. Look at this, guys. Look at it. I love the subtle improvements each time you watch a Valox video, like the camera work or the, the audio, whatever it is, the just little okay, subtle details. Um, I'm sure we've all heard about the stories on this place. Yeah. As well as the unfortunate loss of life to the poor children. So this and is FNAF 2. I was going to try the spirit box session with the main animatronics, but unfortunately they've already been scrapped. Why is that a cartridge? If really Easter egg hunts. These things, then I sure as hell hope they can't feel anything. Yeah. So after doing a ton of research, it seems like that these guys are mostly active at night. Yeah. And if the rumors about the dead kids possessing these things are true... I would like to just ask a few questions to clarify some things. Yeah. Just clarify Hello? some things. Were you killed by a man? this something in the back there's something in the back Hello? oh good lord if anyone's here any spirits how no I only wish to talk these are the withered animatronics where are the toy animatronics were they on the stage i didn't Jeremy see Timber! Oh dear, that's not good. I just have a couple of questions to ask you. So if you can understand me, can you move or respond in any way? What's that sound? What was... It's gonna be something to his... That Freddy to his right is gonna be moving. No? Damn it, okay. dead! Wow, that's ironic. Oh, good lord. What did you just say? I don't know if he was saying it sounded like you're... Are you... Are you saying you're trapped? I think he's trying to beatbox, maybe? Are you... One of the spirits? One of the children, I mean. What? Listen to me. Bro, can you talk normally? I want to help you. I know what happened. No? How are you getting that from there? You sound you like a, help? It sounds like a character from Animal Crossing right now. N none of you? No, get out. We're having a good time no. in here, buddy. I know who it was. Oh, look at those the, eyes. The man that did this to you. 
Shifty. I can help you. I can help you get your revenge. His name? His name is William Afton. And I can get you to him. Yeah, you... He's... He's my father. Whoa, whoa, don't stop, stop, stop. I, I'm not with him. I'm not with him. Oh, good he God. He awful shit to me, too. And I want him gone just as much as you guys do. Wait, who's... Did somebody say William Afton? Hang on. It's you. Is that is that meant to be William there wearing a mascot suit? Wait, what was that? What's happening? What just happened? Because I was talking in a normal voice there. How do you intend to help us? I think they said. Right. Well, that was an interesting look to FNAF 2. So what there? He, he went in. Michael went in to... Because he heard about the, the supposed kids. He wanted to help them. And this Shadow Freddy creature... Creature. Animatronic. It looks like... I'm thinking that's an animatronic, but is that a person... In the suit, I don't think it's a person in the suit, but he's willing to help them. So I'm guessing this is a continuation and there's going to be more. That was awesome, Valox. Keep up the amazing work, guys. Subscribe to Valox. Watch the videos for yourself, all that good stuff. And let's move on to the next video. The last video was submitted on my Discord by Ivo. Project Britannica Interrogation by Jack G Animation. So I believe in the last video we learned about the mesh back in the 80s, I think it was. Okay. And there was something to do with the elevators. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Wait, is this... Okay, that's just like a model ship, obviously on a table. I love the atmosphere that this is setting up. So, one thing... I, so in this universe, guys, it wasn't the Titanic that was hit, that hit an iceberg, it was the Lusitania. I'm not sure what happened to the Titanic. I don't know if that was explained, but the Olympic went out to see the Mauritania. I think that's what the ship's called. Cause it was just stranded with nobody on the ship. And um, it stunk apparently. And then this mesh started appearing on the Olympic. Oh, here we go. He's got a nosebleed. And this mesh has had something like, it's completely like, messed up the timelines, in honesty. That was a fantastic intro. Really good. What I like about this is, like, the visuals are amazing, obviously. But in terms of, like, monsters and stuff, it doesn't really show anything. We've just heard something so far. We've seen the mesh... Uh, but we haven't, and we've seen what it does to people, but we haven't actually seen what it is, like what this monster is. Okay, Project Britannica, a guide to our ships, set one. Welcome to the Project Britannica. Hell yeah. This tape is designed to guide new employees into their assigned ships from set one, and to familiarize employees with the inhabitation level of their assigned ships. Uh -huh. This tape will cover the first set of Project Britannica's ships. Yeah those being the SS Mauritania yeah the SS Prometheus Prometheus there's a new one that we haven't heard yet the SS Empress of Britain or this one there was a lot SS Olympic okay there was I think there's one um, ship that still remains in this like fleet 
I think the rest were like like taken apart maybe or just uh what 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 do you call it when they're just out of service um I think it was the Queen Mary or something like that there are only three active ships that are referred to as Royal Mail ships or Royal Mail vessels RMS Segwon, RMS Salonian 3 is that how you say that and RMS Queen Mary and I think you can actually go on the Queen Mary like it's for people who like that old form of travel just for the experience i guess one of set one ss mauritania inhabitation level zero employees okay. assigned to mauritania must only board the ship in specially provided suits oh wow no less than 12 people boarding the ship at a time wow 12 people in that big ass employees ship employees must communicate to the outside team every minute with an exact location on the ship Interesting. According to the provided deck plans. Yeah, I would. You wouldn't see me do this job. Uh, why do I need to do that? Three of set one. SS. Imp Wait, three? We just skipped two. Empress of Britain. Inhabitation level 55. Employees assigned to Empress of Britain may board the ship without the provided suits. Yeah. But only if entering the topmost decks of the vessel. Okay. Any employees venturing below deck D must wear the provided suits and communicate their position with their employees on a higher deck every five minutes according every to five the deck minutes. plans. So this is obviously because of the mesh, right? The mesh has somehow infiltrated this network of ships. Ship 4 of Set 1, SS Olympic, in habitation level, 95. 95. Employees assigned to SS... Lusitania Survivor, Will McGowan. McGowan, Project Britannica interview 1987. Thank you for coming in today, Mr. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. Will McGowan, age 19 in 1911 and age 22 in 1987. So there's some time travel going on here. McGowan. Just for your information, this interview will be recorded and used for the purposes of Project Britannica. Wow. Take as much time as you need. If you want to take a short break or would prefer to write down your account, please. I'm fine speaking. Well then, let's begin. Right. What was your role aboard the Lusitania in April of 1911? Well, I'd been assigned to a third class steward on the Lusitania. After a Mauritania, I went missing a few months before. Most of the lads I worked with there when you. What is that accent? Is that. Recruits. Most of our current Lusitania crew had left. Irish? I don't think many of them wanted to be on that ship. They didn't want to be on the ship? Oh no, sir. Not after the Mauritania. Yeah. Many of those lads had wives and children at home. I was just happy to be out of the mines and somewhere clean. Mm -hmm. You had sailed before this? Never, sir. This was my first sailing. The ironclad and co mines where Mr. McGowan previously Very worked. Good. A few of the lads I worked with up in the Pennines were aboard in the cargo holds. Some as clean as on the deck. Another lad was with me in third class. How would the voyage been before the night of the 22nd? Okay, so A this fine. was the last photo. Which one? One of these guys is uh, McGowan. One indeed, sir. All the Lucy was a grand thing, you know. And we were practically flying across the Atlantic with a pace they had us going at. I think one of the deckhands told me we'd cross 27 knots on Friday. 27 knots. Ship two Whoa, there was, there was some text there. Hang on. You weren't supposed to live, Will. They're lying to you, Will. Ship two of set two. You weren't supposed SS to live. Aquitania. Inhabitation. Aquitania. Level 85. Employees assigned to SS Aquitania may board the ship without the provided suits, but only if entering the uppermost decks of the vessel. Okay. Key hot spots on the vessel are the engine rooms okay so we learned that uh in the last video in the mesh report that the mesh was it in the olympic i think it was or is it the titanic i can't remember because i got confused between the two because um the video was shown titanic but they were talking about the olympic with the mesh which is real weird but they're saying that the mesh kind of came the from the engine room boiler rooms so basically the it's taken it's taking like part controls of the most important the parts of the ship. Ship three of set two, SS Waratah, inhabitation level forty-three. 
Wartow. Employees assigned to SS Wartow may board the Wartow. Oh, okay. So what were you doing at the time of the collision? We were readying the saloon for breakfast, sir. Few of the other lads were in there during the collision, and we were thrown to the floor, you know. Bits of the iceberg came in through the windows and shattered the glass. Damn. We all ran up to the top deck to see it pass the stern. It was a huge thing, you know. Towered right above the funnels. Mm. There was ice all along the promenade deck, from forward to aft. And what did you do after the collision? We were told to report to the top deck in an event of an accident. Mm-hmm. They will. Whoa, okay, hang on. Well, give us a second. Oh, okay, I'll go in the comments for this one just because I know people will probably uh, had a look at this. But there are little secret messages here. I actually missed some secret messages in the last one, so I'm trying to uh, stay attentive. The mesh aboard Mauritania. Hang on, go back to that. They win. The mesh aboard RMS Mauritania, 1913. There was something with that ship, with all of those ships. We weren't oblivious to it, you know. I saw with my own eyes the Mauritania when they dragged her back in. She was practically a wreck. That yeah. just doesn't happen by itself. Please, Mr. McGowan, if you would just... Twen McGowan, sorry, I've been saying McGowan. Twenty years you've kept us in here. Twenty bloody years since whoever brought us all in here. It's been so long, I don't even know where we are anymore. Twenty years? Just tell me for the love of God, what was that... Thing in the Lusitania and the Mauritania. The, okay, he's talking about the mesh. You know I can't. Tell me! Tell me! Tell me what the hell are those bloody Oh, you notice how, like, I just realized his, like, the things are getting worse. Like, his nosebleed. He's actually bleeding from the eyes here as well. And the ears, I think. I know you know. You know you know. Please just tell me what the hell happened on my ship. Please, before I can't remember anymore. Did he survive? <laughs> okay, my camera just stopped recording. <clears throat> I was so focused on the screen, guys. I don't know how long that was like that for. So what, what is this the room that that took place? Is this still on the ship? Where was he kept? This, no, nah, this isn't the ship. Right? Unless it is. Man, the atmosphere is amazing. Done such a great job, Jack. Really good job. Okay, no, this is a... So there's some kind of time travel that's happened here. Something happened on when the iceberg was hit the Lusitania. Was there already this mesh may have like was the mesh on board at this point? And that maybe the 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 clash of the iceberg did something. Maybe the mesh tried protecting itself. Or maybe it was like Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. How did he survive? How oh, yeah. Okay, so they've got loads of ships in their harbour. It is called a harbour, right? I think this is a uh, copyrightable music, guys, but it's it's bloody good. I'll tell you that. Man, you got the Titanic there. Tell me, it's really little. Yeah, definitely copyright music. But very good. Very, very good. Um, give me a sec. Let me have a look at if I can see the names of these ships. Prometheus. So you got the Prometheus. You got the Titanic. So the Titanic was unscathed. Okay. What what year is this? Is this 1987, 1988? Dr. Ward voiced by Matthew Skiles. One more going voiced by Ethan Oliver. That was very natural voice acting, to be fair. Really good. 
All right, I need to mute this, guys, but um, it's a shame I can't really enjoy the, the end there properly. Or oh, you guys can. I mean, I can, but I have to kind of mute that for you. But that's very interesting. You know what's interesting about this? So apparently uh, in 2004, I can't remember where this was in the timeline uh, or what video this was, but apparently the Olympic was found abandoned by the Royal Navy around the Isle of Man. Was that in one of the first videos? What's interesting about that, though, is that it, it kind of implies that the same thing happened that happened to the Mauritania. It was completely abandoned. And like the Royal Navy, that means that the people who found this, the Royal Navy. So this means that the mesh potentially has infected military ships, which is a terrifying thought. OK, judging by the time scale between the Lusitania's loss and Rex discovery in the Lusitania archives, it seems that Lusitania was lost in 1911 and found in 1984, which happens to be when Jack was photographed on the wreck. It stands to reason then that if he was basically kept in stasis on the wreck, that he was still 19 in 1984, turned 20 in 1985, 21 in 1986. That's how he's only turned 22 in 1987. So wait, the, the Lusitania crashed and was just lost for 70 years? 73 years and then it came back and then what jack was just there completely fine but i'm guessing in jack's mind he feels like nothing's happened to him so it's like that show uh, manifest when they're on the plane and they go through and then like that they, they all start like there was some mad turbulence right and then they land and then apparently they've traveled like five years into the future or they were considered missing but to them it was just a bit of turbulence and then they, you know they're down so i'm guessing it's a similar thing here where something's happened to um, Will and he's unaware of it. You know, one thing I've learned about this uh, series for sure is the, the passion that people have for steamships and just old RMS um, fleets. It was really cool to see in honesty and you learn a lot about it. And obviously I'm going to show my ignorance and say I'm only really learning things that you guys teach me. But it's super interesting for sure. And I really am enjoying this series. It's it's a really good one. Like the, the, the storytelling done really well. The atmosphere at the start and end, fantastic, really good. Still don't know what this mesh is and where it came from, but it definitely has some kind of properties that of time travel, not necessarily maybe time travel, or it, it has the ability to affect the person who maybe interacts with it to time travel. There's a lot of properties to it, obviously. Someone died in one of the elevators. I know that on the Olympic in 1988, I think it was. And is that the only victim so far? Obviously, there was like all the people that have gone missing and stuff. But that's the only like dead person we've come across uh, that this mesh has supposedly killed. And we know that, there, that something's up with this mesh because in that video, the 1988 one, I forgot which video it actually was. When he's running away and goes into the elevator um we hear the monster behind him screaming like really loud but we don't know what it is and that's kind of terrifying because it builds up the image in your own mind like what is this thing we've seen the mesh but we haven't seen the thing that it births and i think that's what this is it's like a ecosystem almost that's given birth to maybe entities but this person in 1988, I think, is the only person that maybe caught on film what being didn't actually catch on film what it was, but that there's a danger there. There's an actual threat there. Before this, I think it was just considered an inconvenience by the people on the ships. And I, I guess they found a way of removing the mesh because I think in 1988, there was like loads of it. And then in 1996, I think it was, there was not a lot of it, but they're saying like, we need to get rid of the mesh. And that was at the point where I believe the Olympic was being turned into a hotel, uh, but the mesh was still there. But super interesting overall. I really enjoyed this series. It's really good. So keep up the amazing work, Jack. Guys, be sure to go subscribe, like the video, watch the videos for yourself. You know, there's a lot here. Uh, there's a lot of storytelling here and, you know, it requires like a timeline of events to understand what's going on. And I definitely am going to have to go back once again and like watch it through and try and understand it all before this carries on. Because um, it's a complicated one, but it's a very, very interesting one. But there we go, guys. That is the video for today. Once again, be sure to go subscribe to all the creators showcased in this video. They will be linked down below in the order that I watch them. If you enjoyed my reaction video, consider subscribing. This is the majority of my content, analog horror, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you did enjoy. 
and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.